equation versus differential linear equation, or I should say a linear coefficient, uh, differential equation with linear coefficients. So recall a linear equation. If we just have x's and y's, the general form is ax plus by plus c equals 0. The y equals mx plus b doesn't always work. It only works if you have a, let's see. This assumes your slope is defined. So this won't work for vertical lines. However, the general form of linear equation works for vertical lines. So cross that out. What does a vertical line look like in this general form? ax plus by plus c equals 0. Yep, x equals something, or in this case, x plus c equals 0 in, in this form. That'll have x coordinate of negative c. So whatever that value is, that's your vertical line. Um, horizontal lines, oh no, they tricked me. <coughs> All right, so that's linear equation. System, a linear system. is two of these or more. And we'll go a1x1 plus b1y plus c1 equals 0. And the next one, we'll just do a2, b2, c2. You could have a system of more than two, but we're just going to have a system of two here. All right, what are your possible solutions? So let's start out with the most disappointing, which is no solution. So you could have no solution. There could be no x, y that makes both of these true. What's another possibility? Linear systems in two dimensions. You could have infinite, which means the lines are not just parallel, but also the same. Same, which means parallel, and uh, same, I'll just write y-intercept, but it really any point being the same and parallel is enough to say your lines are the same. What's the other possibility? What's in between no solutions or zero solutions and every single point on the line is a solution? One solution. One solution. So uh, lines are not parallel, they're going to intersect one place. So if you classify these, we get zero solutions, one solution, and infinite solutions. I don't really want to write on top of these, no solution. All right. We're going to look at a translation of axes. So what we're going to do is basically shift some amount. drawing a staircase right now. So 
So I have a point zero zero HK, and I'm going to rename this as zero zero, but with a bar on the top. So we call that an overbar. And our last point, uh, we'll call it P, and it will be XY. be x bar, y bar. So what in the world are these bars? <coughs> so looking at what we have here, so this amount right here is h, the next amount is So I want this, this amount is h, this amount we go up is k, the amount we go over here is x bar, and the amount we go up is going to be y bar. So that's x bar, and this point right here, we'll call it xy. <coughs> So we're going to do these bar notation. Basically, we're going to move the origin to some new point, hk. So if I move over h and up k, I'm going to call this new point 0 bar, 0 bar. So I'm basically shifting the origin over. So there's two coordinate systems. There's a regular xy coordinate system, and then there's the bar coordinate system. And another way to look at it, if I layer on top a second xy axis, that's our new origin up here. So our new coordinate system has that as the origin. So it's just a shift over and a shift up. And let's relate the two coordinates together. So x, if you look here, the this amount is x right here, and if we go up, that amount is y. So x, just looking here, x, going over x is the same as going over h and then x bar. So I could solve for, we'll solve for x bar, yeah. x bar is going to be x minus h, and we're going to do something very similar for, if we add k plus y bar. What is k plus y bar on here? Y. That's regular y. So go up k, go up y bar, we'll call that amount y. And solving for y bar equals y minus k. So this new coordinate system is basically a translation or a shift of our old coordinate system. And we use bars. So just like before, why in the world did I talk about homogeneous? The answer was because luckily it worked out to be a separable after we did some work. So it wasn't obvious at the beginning why I was talking about homogeneous until it actually worked out nicely that that turned it into separable. So this translation is going to eventually turn this into a nice solvable differential equation. So we're going to consider linear coefficients. So we'll have a linear function in front of dx and another linear function. In front of dy and this will equal zero. So we're going to start with this right here. So 
So we'll first look at the case where they're not parallel. So what does it mean for them to not be parallel? And let's see, we will look at I think we'll look at parallel also. Well, we'll certainly look at the not parallel case first. So what does it mean to be parallel? Or I should say not parallel. It does mean they intersect ones. Two lines are not parallel. Parallel. All right, what properties of those lines tell you they're not parallel? It's not the y-intercepts. Slope. slope. Unfortunately, we don't directly see slope in this form we sort of indirectly see slope in this form. So not parallel if slopes are not equal. Hmm, how in the world do we find slopes here? So let's start with our usual letters, M1, not M2. And then we'll figure out how in the world do we take A1, B1, and C1 and get M1. How do we take A2, B2, C2 and get slope two? So how to find M1? So we're starting from A1x plus B1y plus C1 equals zero. How do we figure out slope? How do we go from general form into slope-intercept form? It's not too difficult. Solve for y, and you'll have some form like y equals some coefficient of x plus b. So we're solving for y. So we get b1y equals negative c1. Let me put the x term first. Negative a1x minus c1 divided by b1. So there we go. Slope and y-intercept. I don't at this moment I don't care about the y-intercept. I just wanted to get to the slope. So our slope, which of these numbers is our slope? Minus a1 over b1. Yep, minus a1 over b1. So there's our slope of our first line. What did we assume implicitly in order to write like this? B1 is not zero. So we divided by B1, so if B1 was zero, this doesn't make sense to write down. And what happens if B1 equals zero? What type of line do we have? Vertical, Vertical line. So either this is the slope or B1 is equal to zero. All right, so we're undefined if b1 is 0. And let's skip some steps and just write the exact same thing happens for slope number 2, except you're just using co uh, subscript 2 for your second slope. So we said above m1 is not m2. So let's keep going with that. So now I actually have a formula for m1 and m2. So it means negative a1 over b1 is not negative a1 over ooh, a2 over b2. So multiply by negative 1.
And if you want, you could cross multiply and get a1, b2 is not a2, b1, whichever one you want to look at. So that's how you'll determine if they're parallel or not. If these are not equal, they're not parallel. All right, what are the implications for them not being parallel? They intersect at one point. So if they're not parallel, there's going to be one solution to this system. So we can write that down. And we will call this HK. Yeah. All right, so we have exactly one solution when we're not parallel, and that is, we're calling that point HK. So nothing, I didn't make any assumptions here other than you got two lines in two dimensions. They're going to, and they're not parallel, so we know they're going to intersect at one, exactly one point. Um, if we look at parallel, there's two cases, and we'll look at that later. But we'll assume they're not parallel, so we got one solution. All right, what does that mean? So this means A1H plus B1K plus C1 equals zero, and A2H plus B2K plus C2 equals zero. That's what it means to be a solution. You satisfy both of those equations with that HK. So now we're going to start making some substitutions. So we're going to let x equal x bar plus h, and y equal y bar plus k. And it's important to note that h and k are constant. So when you take a derivative, h and k, their derivatives are going to be 0. All right, so of course, if you're going to sub out y, uh, x and y, you're going to need to sub out dx and dy, just like we did before. So good news is these derivatives are super easy. What is dx? Too much thinking. dx bar. dx bar plus 0. How do you write that? The variable is x bar, so it's just d in front of the variable x bar. And same thing dy is dy bar. So at least the, that part of the substitution is going to be very simple. We're going to make all these substitutions. Substitutions. I will circle the, all the substitutions. We have this dx, dy, that, and that. There's basically four substitutions. X and Y are coming out, and DX and DY are coming out. So those are the four things we're going to sub out. So I'm going to rewrite the original differential equation. A1X plus B1Y plus C1 DX plus A2X B2Y. So I think I need to scroll out a little bit. It's going to get a little uglier before it gets better. So where I see x, I'm putting in x bar plus h. Where I see y, I'm putting in y bar plus h. And then dx and dy are the easy, actually easy parts of this substitution.
Now you technically don't have to write a side of the equation you're not changing. So I'm not changing the 0 on the right side, so I'm not going to bother writing equal 0. I also can't fit it on the board. But mathematically, you're not required to write the side of an equation if it's not going to change. All right, what can we do next? I'm going to do some algebra. So we're going to distribute everything, and we're going to collect the, we're going to exploit the fact that we know those two things right there. So we're going to collect a1h plus b1k plus c1 together. So we're going to just basically distribute these two and then reorder the terms. So go ahead and distribute a1 in there, distribute b1 in there, and then reorder the terms. And you should be able to solve for turn a1h plus b1k plus c1, and that will turn into 0. So I distributed and reordered at the same time. And what I just underlined in blue, those are both 0 from what we said above. So those two terms are going to disappear. And we're just left with a1x bar plus b1y bar dx bar. And very similar on the other side a2x bar plus b2y bar dy bar, and I'll just rewrite that 0 on the right side. So yes, we did change x's into x bars basically and y's into y bars, but why is this a little bit nicer than what we originally had? So we eliminated our constants. It's a lot of effort to get rid of two constants. So we did have to shift um, over and up, but we got rid of some constants. Unfortunately, it's not separable. But what was our last section? Homogeneous. homogeneous. So maybe they're homogeneous if we're lucky. So test, are they homogeneous or not? And it looks like it doesn't matter if you go with y over x, or in this case, y bar over x bar, or x bar over y bar, because it looks like they're going to behave the same. So I think yesterday we did a lot of x over y's. So let's go the other way this time. Let's do y over x. Except now it's going to be y bar over x bar, because those are our two variable names here. So that means x bar u equals y bar. And we're going to take the derivative of both sides. and make those changes. You have to do a little bit of algebra to rewrite these uh, the functions.
right, we are almost separable, if you're with me so far. Now, right here, you're basically foiling, is what you're doing. Because you have a term, or two terms added together times two other terms added together. So you're basically foiling there. I just did it in two separate steps. I distributed twice. All right, we're almost there. What's the last step to make this separable? And that's an A, not a U. So, so I have all the U's are basically next to the DX bar. So I have to get a divide by those. And then the X bar, I have to get away from the DU. So we're just dividing by those two terms. So we're going to get 1 over X bar DX bar plus A. I'll space this out a little more. Plus A1 plus B2U divided by this mess right here. A1 plus B1U plus U A2 plus B2U DU. All right, separable. So we can integrate both of those two and do what we did before. At least one of them is really easy, ln x bar. The other one all depends on what those numbers actually work out to be. OK, so we just showed that a linear non-parallel turns into homogeneous. Well, I should, the full story is it turns into homogeneous, which then turns into separable. Okay, and so let's do an example. Two x minus y plus one dx plus x plus y all right so first of all are they parallel we can scroll back and look somewhere this is uh, we don't want a1 over b1 to equal a2 over b2 so let's look and see what those are right there so we're going to do a parallel check. So we're just going to fill in the A1, B1. A1 is 2, B1, negative 1. Over here, 2. They're both 1 and 1 themselves. So definitely not equal. So not parallel. All right, step one, we have to solve that linear system. So we have to set them both equal to zero and solve them. All right, so take two minutes and figure out your solution. We should get exactly one solution, and hopefully it's not terribly ugly. You could go with substitution. Elimination looks really obvious. Looks like a really good move to just add those two equations together and find one of those coordinates real fast.
So unfortunately we got fractions, that's okay. Hopefully it won't make the rest of the problem too miserable. All right, so we got H and K. So any questions on getting that solution? So what are we gonna do next? We circled all these substitutions we're gonna make right here in green already. So we're gonna make these substitutions. So X equals X bar plus H, Y equals Y bar plus K. So H is negative a third, K is positive one third. So DX and DY are easy to find. They're just DX bar, DY bar like they were before. That's not the exciting part. So now we're going to apply those substitutions. So wherever I see x, I'm going to replace by x bar minus one third, and wherever I see y, I'm going to replace by y bar plus third. So I'm going to make those, and I'll circle these in green. These are the actual substitutions we're going to perform right now. So wherever I see y and y bar, I'm going to swap those out. x and x bar, oh, x and dx, I'm going to swap out also. And remember, our constants should be disappearing, hopefully. That's the whole reason we went around and did all this stuff. So minus 1 third plus a third, those cancel out. That's pretty clear. So we have x bar plus y bar, dy bar. And over here on the right side, we have negative, well, I'll just write it all out, x bar minus 2 thirds minus y bar minus 1 third plus 1. And we have negative two thirds minus a third plus one. Those all add up to zero. Not a coincidence. You better eliminate all your constants. So we just have x bar minus y bar dx bar plus x bar plus y bar. Would that be two x bar? Sure would be. Okay, we have a better linear system, linear ODE. Why is this one better? Yep, so what can we do? Separate it. What do we have to do to separate it? It's a homogeneous, so we just have to homogenize it. So, what's that? Sure. Uh, so we're going to let we did y over x, we'll just do y over x, so you, well, in this, this case, it'll be y bar over x bar. So multiply by x bar, x bar u equals y bar, and go ahead and take the derivative, and then make all the substitutions, and hopefully it'll turn into separable. So see if you can separate this out. It'll take a little longer, so I'll give you about two minutes on this. And it's a good time to ask for any help.
So this is. Trying to skip some steps so we can get out of here on time. Um, so there's going to be an X bar that's going to cancel out of everything, or you can divide out. So I just distributed and got rid of an X bar on the first term and then X bar on the second one. So we're almost there. Get all your DX bars next to each other. So we have 2 minus U plus 1 plus U, U, D, oops, that's DX bar. So we'll divide by a x bar. I'm worried. Yeah. Okay. I think I was thinking d x bar and just didn't write the d x bar. There we go. All right. So we'll divide. Get the uh, x bar. X bar d x bar plus one plus u divided by two minus u. Let's distribute. We have plus u plus u squared plus u squared du. So we'll integrate both of these. We'll just skip and just write that's ln x bar plus integral 1 plus u. The minus u plus u cancels. We just have 2 minus 2 plus u squared du. It doesn't look like the most fun integral. Uh, just looking at it though, I think it might be smart. Yeah. One of them is a u sub, and I think the other one's tangent inverse. And remember, on your very last antiderivative, you need a plus c in there. So whatever one you do last gets a plus c. You could write a plus C earlier, but then you're going to write plus C more times. 
So I just I like to think of the plus C's hiding in the last integral that you do. And then you write your plus C. All right, I have to leave you here, unfortunately, but you can finish. This one is very close to being finished. You can finish this one off. It's like a good story.